welcome students uh, this is the lecture number 37 of unit number 4 of biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetic and the topic for today's lecture is two compartment open model okay now first of all what do you mean by compartment say this compartment model or this compartmental analysis is a very traditional approach and it is a most commonly used method for the pharmacokinetic characterization of a drug okay now what do you mean by pharmacokinetic characterization of a drug uh, uh, it is very simple thing the meaning of pharmacokinetic characterization of drug is we have to measure the plasma drug concentration at different time interval okay uh, so as to predict that uh, what amount of drug has been released or whatever amount of drug has been reached into the systemic circulation okay so the depending upon the compartments whether they are arranged in the parallel uh, mode or they are arranged in the series we are having two different types of models one is the mammillary model one is the mammillary model and second one is the catenary model okay so first is the mammillary model in this it is the commonest of uh, the compartmental model and it consists of various peripheral compartments they are arranged in the parallel okay as uh, uh, similar to a satellite is connected to a planet Yes, in a similarly in this manner the compartments are arranged or compartments are connected to a central compartment now in the catenary compartment model in the catenary model the compartments are arranged in series just like a uh, just like the compartment of a train okay so these two are the different types of models uh, that we have used in the compartmental modeling now these compartmental model can be of various type we can have one compartment model we can have two compartment model and we can have three compartment model okay so as the name indicates in the one compartment model there will be only one compartment the body will behave like a single compartment okay in the two compartment model we are having two different compartments one is known as the central compartment and second one is the peripheral compartment okay in the three compartment model we can have three different type of model uh, um, uh, in this also one will be the central compartment and other two will be the peripheral compartment okay in this there will be one compartment in this one is the central compartment and second one is the peripheral compartment okay so in the two compartment model there will be one central compartment and one peripheral compartment in case of three compartment model we can have one central compartment and two peripheral compartment okay so uh, the one compartment model we uh, have already discussed in the unit number 3 so in this i would be discussing about the two compartment open model iv bolus kinetics okay now uh, i have told you one compartment open model two compartment open model three compartment open model now what is the meaning of this open why we have used this term this open term designates that the flow or the movement of drug from the compartment that can be from one compartment to the another compartment that is unidirectional means the drug is reaching in the body and also leaving out the body okay so that's why we have called this uh, it as the one compartment open model or two compartment open model okay so in this lecture i will be discussing about the two compartment open model kinetics okay now what do you mean by two compartment in the two compartment model the plasma drug concentration declines by exponentially 
in case of one compartment open model there was a one kinetic or there was a one uh, exponential line through which the plasma drug concentration uh, was getting declined okay if we talk about the one compartment open model iv bolus kinetics in that case the drug concentration was declining like this like this okay but in case of two compartment open model the drug is declining in this means we are having two different phases sorry in the two compartment the drug is declining like this means we are having two different phases means this bi exponential curve is the sum of two first order rate processes and the rate processes are distribution and the elimination <coughs> okay in the two compartment model the plasma drug concentration is declining bi exponentially Okay, and why it is bi exponential? Because it is the sum of the distribution and the elimination process. Okay, so in the two compartment model, the drug is getting distributed in two different compartments. One compartment is the central compartment, and second one is the tissue or peripheral compartment. Okay, so now what is this central compartment? This central compartment is the highly perfused organ in which drug is. Uh, getting uh, uh, drug flow is very high so it represents the blood extracellular fluid and the highly perfused tissue okay so the highly perfused tissue will uh, serve as a role of central compartment from here the drug is reaching and from here the drug will get distributed into the other compartments or into the other organs okay so the, from the central compartment drug will distributed rapidly and the uniformly okay means whenever a person administer a drug the when the drug is reaching into the blood or into the systemic circulation okay that is the central compartment when it has reached into the blood it reaches into the central compartment and from this central compartment from the blood it has to be distributed into the various organ or into the various tissues or we can say into the peripheral compartment okay so basically this is the central compartment and from this central compartment drug has to be distributed into the peripheral compartment okay okay from the central compartment drug has to be distributed into the peripheral compartment okay now what do you mean by peripheral compartment this peripheral compartment is also known as the tissue compartment also okay and the peripheral compartment contains the tissues in which drug is equilibrating more slowly in case of central compartment drug is getting rapidly distributed or uh, rap, uh, or rapidly equilibrated but in case of tissue or peripheral compartment because of the less flow of blood because of the less vascularization there is slow uh, equilibration of the drug or slow distribution of the drug amongst the peripheral compartment so in the peripheral compartment drug transfer between the two compartments can takes place by the first order rate process okay so uh, in case as i have told you previously that in case of two compartment model we are getting a bi exponential curve so this is the curve that we are getting in case of two compartment model kinetics okay so in this there is the plasma drug concentration on y axis there is a time and when we plot a curve between the logarithm of drug concentration versus time we are getting a this type of curve okay so the initial phase the initial phase shows the rapid decline and it re is representing the distribution phase means in this phase the drug is getting distributed from the central compartment to the peripheral compartments okay but in the terminal phase after some time this phase is uh, uh, is declining there is a slow decline at the terminal and this phase is representing the elimination phase 
ok. In uh, here the drug is getting eliminated from the central compartment ok. So, this elimination can also takes place from central compartment as well as from the peripheral compartment ok. So, when that uh, elimination taking place from the peripheral compartment then this curve we will get ok. So, this is a bi exponential curve that we are getting in case of the two compartment model ok. Now, as I have told you depending upon the, comp uh, the compartment from where the drug is eliminated because this is a two compartment open model means the drug which is reaching into the blood it has to be eliminated from the blood uh, from the body it has to be removed from the body. So, the elimination can takes place from the central compartment as well as from the peripheral compartment ok. So, depending upon the arrangement or depending upon the uh, compartment from which where the drug is getting eliminated we are having two three different types of categorization. The two compartment model can be categorized into three types first one is the model 1 second is the model 2 and third one is the model 3 ok. So, this arrangement is on the basis of the elimination that take uh, that is taking place from which compartment ok. So, when we talk about the model 1 in case of model 1 2 compartment model 1 here the elimination takes place from the central compartment ok. Suppose, this is the central compartment and the drug is getting distributed into the peripheral compartment ok. If it is a IV bolus kinetics then the drug is already in the central compartment in case of IV bolus drug is directly reaching into the systemic circulation. Na. So, the drug is already available in the central compartment. So, the uh, if the elimination the elimination takes place with the help of constant k ok this is the elimination rate constant. If this elimination is getting uh, takes place from the central compartment then it is called as the model 1 ok. This is representing the model 1 ok. Now, in the second model we can have the elimination takes place from the peripheral compartment ok. This is the central compartment and from here the drug is getting distributed into the peripheral compartment and if the elimination takes place from this peripheral compartment then this is the type of model 2 ok. Now, model 3 <coughs> it is the two compartment model in which the elimination from both the compartment takes place ok and we can represent this. This is the central compartment, this is the peripheral compartment and if the elimination takes place from both the compartment then it will be called as a model 3, 2 compartment model 3 ok in which the elimination is from both the compartments ok. Now, this is the representation of 2 compartment model number 1. In case of model 1 as I have told you the elimination is getting uh, uh, the elimination takes place from the central compartment. So, here 3 constants are available this is k 1 2 ok we are considering this central compartment as compartment number 1 and this peripheral compartment as compartment number 2. So, when a drug is getting distributed from the central compartment to the peripheral compartment then the rate constant that is involved will be represented as k 1 2 ok. And if the drug movement takes place from the peripheral compartment to the central compartment then the rate constant will be represented as k 2 1 ok and the elimination rate constant we are representing it by k e ok here e 
is designating the elimination, k is uh, uh, representing the constant and e is eliminating uh, e is designating the elimination. So, k e is the elimination rate constant and when the elimination takes place from the central compartment, this is considered as the model 1. Now, if we talk about the model number 2, in case of model 2 as I have told you the elimination will take place from the peripheral compartment sorry this will not applicable in this the elimination will takes place from the peripheral compartment in case of model 1 the elimination takes place from the central compartment but in case of model 2 this will not be applicable in this the uh, elimination will takes place from the peripheral compartment okay now the third model in case of third model, the, there are uh, the elimination takes place from both of the compartment that is from the central compartment as well as from the peripheral compartment. Okay. The k 1 2 is the rate constant uh, that is showing the movement of the drug from the central compartment to the peripheral compartment and k 2 1 is the drug movement the constant that is representing the drug movement from peripheral compartment to the central compartment. Okay. So, these two constants k 1 2 and k 2 1 are representing the first order rate process or first order rate transfer constants. Okay. And if the drug is getting moved from 1 to 2, then the constant will be k 1 2 and if the drug is getting moved from 2 to 1, the rate constant will be k 2 1 and this k e is the elimination rate constant and as I have told you in case of model 3, the elimination takes place from both of the compartments means the central compartment as well as from the peripheral compartment. Okay. Now, in case of this two compartment model, we can have apparent volume of distribution that we have to calculate it. We can calculate the drug clearance, we can calculate biological half life as well as elimination rate constant and the AUC. Now, these terms we have already discussed in the previous chapters. Now, what is AUC? This AUC is representing the area under curve. This is area under curve. Okay. Uh, which curve? The curve that we have plotted between the plasma drug concentration and the time. This is the time on the x axis. Here is plasma drug concentration on the y axis. So, if we plot a curve between the plasma drug concentration and the time, okay. suppose we are talking about the extravascular administration, okay. suppose we are talking about the oral absorption. In case of oral administration of drug, the drug we can get a plasma drug concentration versus time curve like this. Okay. So, the area that is under the curve of plasma drug concentration versus time curve that will be called as the AUC. Okay. So, this area is called as the AUC. Okay. This will this is the function of the rate of change in the plasma drug concentration versus uh, with respect to the time. Okay. So, this AUC we, we can have different methods for the calculation of AUC, we can calculate it by the trapezoidal method, we can calculate it by counting square methods okay. or we can count it way and cut, cut and way method. We can have three different methods first is the trapezoidal method, second one is the counting square method and third one is the by cut and way method. Okay. So, these are the parameters that we have to we can calculate by using this two compartment model <coughs> IV bolus administration kinetics. Okay. So, let us have a recap of today's lecture. As I have told you about the two compartment model, 
we can have one compartment two compartment and three compartment model okay and in these models we can have one compartment model iv bolus kinetics open model iv bolus kinetics we can have one compartment open model uh, extravascular administration we can have two compartment open model iv bolus kinetics or two compartment uh, I, uh, open model extravascular administration or we can say oral absorption and similarly it can also applies to the three compartment model also okay if we want to represent the one compartment open model iv bolus kinetics then we will represent like this okay this is the com central compartment this is the peripheral compartment okay so the drug movement will takes place with the help of these constants okay and this is the elimination rate constant if this uh, if we are if we want to represent the iv bolus kinetics then this is the correct model but if we want to represent the extravascular administration then we have to write this is the k12 this is the k21 okay if we want to represent the this is the two compartment open model iv bolus kinetics okay this applies in case of iv and if we talk about the extravascular administration or oral absorption in case of oral this will not applicable in this case another constant is also here that is k01 okay here also a constant will be involved that is the k from which the drug is getting uh, moved into the central compartment because as all we know that in case of the oral absorption drug is not directly getting absorbed into the blood or drug is not directly reaching into the systemic circulation okay so in case of oral we can represent the two compartment open model extravascular administration like this okay if we want to represent the three compartment model then we can have this is the this is the central compartment okay from here the drug is getting moved into the peripheral compartment and from here also the drug can move into the third compartment also okay because i am uh, telling you about the three compartments so there will be three compartments one two three okay this is the central compartment and from this central compartment drug can move into this as well as drug can move into this okay suppose this is the compartment number 1 this is the 2 and this is the 3 so the rate constant value will be k12 here k21 here k13 and here k31 okay and in this case also the drug movement or the drug elimination can takes place from this one okay if in case of three compartment Uh, extra vascular administration another constant will be here okay that will represent the k01 okay so uh, these are the different types of compartment that we can use for the pharmacokinetic characterization of a drug okay now uh, what is this central compartment this central compartment is the highly perfused organ in which the drug is getting reached and from here the drug is getting distributed among the different tissues or among the different compartments we can say okay so central compartment uh, is representing the blood the extracellular fluids and the highly perfused tissue from where the drug is getting distributed very rapidly and uniformly okay the tissue compartment is representing uh, the various uh, tissues or various organs from uh, they are getting the drug from the central compartment okay this is the curve of two compartment model or we can say a bi exponential curve that we are getting in case of the two compartment model okay so depending upon the arrangement of the compartment or depending upon the elimination that is taking place from compartment we can have three different models 
in the first model the elimination takes place from the central compartment in the second model the elimination takes place from the peripheral compartment and in the third model the elimination takes place from both of the compartment okay so this is the simple representation of the two compartment models that is model 1 2 and 3 okay now from this two compartment model we can have these uh, different parameters that we can calculate from this uh, apparent volume of distribution drug clearance biological half life elimination rate constant as well as the auc okay so uh, about the iv bolus kinetics i will uh, i will tell you in the next lecture of this uh, of this unit number 4 okay thank you